So, how does a bomber do what he does? Why does he do what he does? Well, some of the answers can be found in this book. Now, this book is apparently a bomber's favourite and has been right from when he started up. In fact, when he started up, he was rarely seen without a copy of Rules for Radicals. And he's given away lots of copies of this pragmatic primer for realistic radicals by Saul D. Alinsky to his staff. So what's in there? Well, there's an awful lot in there. I can't possibly go through everything in this video, but I will go through the 12 main rules that are advocated that people will follow. And you can see that he's been applying these rules. So what do we have? Rule number one. Power is not only what you have, but what the enemy thinks you have. Now you think of the number of times he's lied. You think of the number of times he said, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to go around Congress, and I'm going to create all these executive actions and all the rest of it. And yes, he's done it, but a lot of these executive actions he haven't enacted. Now, this is the power that the enemy thinks you have, because if he enacted many of the executive actions that he's actually put into law, then he would be so unpopular, he would be impeached in a heartbeat. So, this rule is obviously one of his key rules. Now, what's the next one? Rule two, never go outside the expertise of your people. Well, we know that he doesn't stretch his staff members. <laughs> his staff members, you know, I mean, dear God. You look, for example, at the lady who gives the press brief briefings, um, you know, talk about avoiding things of which they have no knowledge <laughs> dear me and rule three whenever possible go outside the expertise of the enemy look for ways to increase anxiety insecurity and uncertainty well yeah and this happens all the time especially to the American people now irrelevant arguments that they're forced to address. Well, you think of the number of arguments that Obama has provoked in all sorts of different directions. Arguments about gun control, arguments about immigration, arguments about food, arguments about whether the government's crisis response is good enough, arguments, you know, all over the place. So, while everyone is diffused and going in all these different directions, he can do what the heck he likes. Rule number four. Make the enemy live up to its own book of rules. Oh my god. Well, this is exactly what he does, isn't it? He's always pointing out to Congress, well, your rule is this, you have to do X. And then ignoring the rules himself. Um, so, the besieged entity here is obviously Congress, and it's obviously the American people. He's going to make everyone live up to their own rules, whilst disregarding them completely himself. And that is what he's been doing. Rule number five. Ridicule is man's most potent weapon. Well... You look at any Obama speech about, for example, Snowden, about other political leaders, about anyone that he would consider as an enemy, ridicule is what he uses all the time. All the time. Rule number six. A good tactic is one your people enjoy. Well obviously. So this is why he's populated his closest circle with the people that he has. He's populated his close circle with people who enjoy deluding the American public 
with people who enjoy making a nonsense out of Congress. He has populated his entire administration, to be honest, with people like him. Rule number seven. A tactic that drags on too long becomes a drag. Now you think of all the times when Obama suddenly changed tack. When his administration's been all about doing X, and then suddenly, overnight, his administration is all about doing Y or Z. Well, this is this is why. Um, he continually changes things to keep people on their back foot and to keep all of his activists who work for him involved. And we've got rule number eight. Keep the pressure on. Never let up. Keep trying new things to keep the opposition off balance. As the opposition masters one approach, hit them from the flank with something new. Attack, attack, attack from all sides. Never giving the reeling organisation a chance to rest, regroup, recover and re-strategize. Well, look what's happening to Congress. One minute it's gun control. Then it's debt. Then it's fiscal cliff. Then it's property. Every month or so, the main shift, the main focus of the administration changes. And now, all of a sudden, it's immigration. And all the previous things have been forgotten about because people are running around in circles trying to patch the latest Obama unlawful act. All the time that he keeps people running around, no one can organise. No one can actually do anything about what he is doing. This is a very masterful strategy. Rule number nine. The threat is usually more terrifying than the thing itself. Well, this is so so. You know? I mean, the threat of having 20 million Mexicans coming across your border has certainly polarised people's thinking. And people along the border with Mexico are understandably completely terrified. Even people in Southern California, where lots of small towns now are going to be overrun by immigrants. They're absolutely terrified. So suddenly this thing grips the imagination of the whole nation. And then next month, the one thing I can guarantee, it's going to be changed to be something else. Maybe cyber attacks. Maybe it's going to change back to healthcare. Who knows? But the one thing you can guarantee is that next month there will be a different and dramatic problem which Congress cannot ignore, which results in Congress being paralysed, which results in the American people not being able to organise around any one thing, because it's all going on. Rule 10. If you push a negative hard enough, it will push through and become a positive. Violence from the other side can win the public to your side because the public sympathises with the underdog. Well, well, how many times have we heard Obama prodding and prodding away at one of his policies and saying, you know, this is going to happen, this is a good thing, even when everyone knows it's a bad thing. This is what he's been saying recently about immigration, that it's got to happen, that people have got to be, illegal aliens have got to be given um, status as American citizens, and all this. I mean, as he says... There are already people who are turning around and agreeing with him. Why? Because all of the socialists and all of the, what the Americans would call bleeding heart liberals, they all turn around and think, oh, poor immigrants. Oh, dear. Their country is so bad. And they fail to realise that the reason their country is so bad is because they made it that way. Let's move on to Rule 11 before we run out of time. Rule 11. The price of a successful attack is a constructive alternative. Hmm. What this means is that 
when you attack somebody or an institution then you must already have a solution ready to suggest so you look at the number of times when he's presented Congress with a problem come up with a solution okay it's a solution that nobody likes and put it in an executive action somewhere that's happening all the time and this creates the illusion that he is not the problem, that Congress is the problem. And finally, rule number 12, personal attack. Pick the target, freeze it, personalise it and polarise it. Go after people and not institutions. Now, a lot of Obama's attacks aren't directed at Congress, they're directed at members of Congress, they're directed at particular senators, they're directed at people. And as it says, go after people and not institutions. People hurt faster than institutions. Cruel but very effective. And now he has the NSA available to spy on every member of Congress, on every senator and dig up all their nasty little secrets. How much do you think he's using this? I think he's using it all the time. And I think the amount of support that he has got is mostly due to this rule and his application of it. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you want to buy the book, it's available through Amazon. It's not that expensive. I've got a copy here. Um, it's a very good read, actually. And there's lots of things in it that you can see that, yeah, Obama's done this. Not just the 12 rules, but lots of other advice for activists as well. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.